Bonjour. Hello, Francis in the house. All righty. It is approaching one o'clock and I'm going to go ahead and try to connect with Miss Kalia Campbell. And while I do that, I'm gonna start off. Waiting for Miss Kalia Campbell. Hey, Hi, what's going on? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Okay, so wait. Let me do my intro, and then I'm going to get back to you. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another live broadcast of Conversations With. Um, we're here with Kalia Campbell. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, Conversations With is a part of our Ailey All Access virtual campaign, and we're just basically simply staying aligned with our founder, Mr. Ailey, Mr. Alvin Ailey's uh, mission of bringing dance back to the people. So we're doing that weekly with this program. If you want to know anything else regarding Ailey-related content, go to alvinailey.org slash Ailey All Access. If you want to keep dancing, go to Ailey extension.com slash keep dancing and i am here now first let me let me let me hold on i have to do a disclaimer oh, because man. i'm gonna try not to act a fool because you are my you you my homie okay so i'm gonna try let not him to use act you. Fool. Let him use oh, you. oh okay all right come on okay so ladies and gentlemen we have prophetess <laughs> evangelist Disciple, oh, the sister, minister, <laughs> Kalia. Oh my God, Campbell. You are. What's going on? Hilarious. What's going on, Pookie? Hi, What's Solomon. Up, Pookie? I How miss you, you friend. I miss you too. Hold on, hugs. 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 What's going on, Pookie? I'm How doing good. good. I'm How doing good. You? Taking it day by day. It's been eight weeks, right? And I don't. I have lost track of time. That's because you've been in the word. Oh, That's because you've been say in the word. again. Say it again. You know, time, time is time is a, is a different concept right now. <laughs> exactly. You're too busy so. in the word. What's going on? How have you been? What's what's what? Come on, tell me what's been up. I've been good. Like I said, taking it day by day. Um, really trying to be present and engaged in the lessons that um God is trying to send me. You know, mm -hmm. um, staying uplifted. All right, sister. Yeah. Minister. Um, God is in control, so I'm here. What right. am I going to do with this time? That's what oh. I'm All right. Y'all hear that? Okay. So this, she has started this hour of power. All right. All right. Hold on. So I got, I got something planned with her because I, you know, I had to do some, I was like, what am I going to do with my friend? What am I going <laughs> to do with this one? First off, um, I miss you I'm, uh, because uh. you are, you are my accountability partner. Uh. You are my, account I'm going to try not to be stupid right now <laughs> but you are my accountability part partner um same here we, uh we just we have connected this year in a way that uh i'm really i really appreciate the connection that we've made that we've that we've created this year um, yeah and uh what's going on you got your window up you got the yeah, uh, let me let me let me bye, bye. <laughs> You know, I was ner I was nervous. I was sweating nervous? and stuff. I was you like, let me open the window, you know. It's me, boo. It's <laughs> me, Pookie. All right. So let's begin. Oh. Oh. Oh, let's begin. So you, you know, you've been on my spirit. Oh, okay. Now, everybody stick with this. This spirit word is going to pop up a few times in this hour of power. Uh, but I want to start today's conversation this hour of power with words from another enlightened woman uh by the name of one i mean judith jamison our <laughs> former artistic director <laughs> you <laughs> judith jamison all right here we go uh this is something that people have already probably already heard but um uh, Judith Jamison says, dancing is bigger than the physical body. Think bigger than that. When you extend your arm, 
It doesn't stop at the end of your fingers because you're dancing bigger than that. You're dancing spirit. Now, all right. Thank you for the word. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase. Dancing spirit, Miss Kalia Campbell. Miss Kalia Campbell. Sure. You are dancing spirit. And I say that because every time um, I see you go on stage, I, um, I'm taken to another place. Wow. I am taken to another place. You are an amazing artist. I think um, you are blessed with an amazing uh, facility. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows that, uh, you know, your leg goes up, you have the facility, but when you go out on stage, baby, <laughs> baby, I, I, there are no words. I don't think the words have been defined to describe what I feel when I watch you dance. Um, it's a, it, it takes me on a spiritual journey. Um, you are not interested in being pretty on stage, you are not interested in um, trying to be cute on stage. You take it to another. Yes, James, anointed. That's what it is. Anointed. Anointed. James, come on, James. Come on, James. Prophesy. Anointed. <laughs> Kalia Campbell is anointed on stage. And, 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 and um, it's, it's a, no, seriously, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an honor to what I never get bored watching you dance. Um, in fact, whenever you're on stage um, and I'm not dancing, I make sure I go down here. I go come up from the dressing room or wherever I am. I make sure I go oh on the God. side of the stage to watch you. No, no cap. No cap. Ain't that what the kids say? No cap. I don't know. I had to so, figure that out the other day. I didn't know so, what that was. That's all right because you've been in your words. You're not of the world anymore. You've been in the word. No, so wait a minute. <laughs> so wait a minute. Please share with us. How have you been able to, how did you get to this point in your life? Tell me about your background. How did you get to this point in your life where you've been able to access dancing spirit? Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm going to try to make this short. No, don't make it short. We got to, this is the hour of power. Well, <laughs> the whole hour of power. Come on. Come well, I've um, always been somebody of faith. Um, I grew up in the church. Um, okay. I actually started dancing in the church before I started my formal dance training. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was like embedded in me at a very young age. And um, I've, like I said, I've always been, <laughs> I've always been somebody of faith and, um, Throughout the years, I kind of se like separated myself from that, just being young and wanting to experience what life had for me. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until I got out of high school, um, not knowing what I was going to do. Um, I didn't go to college. We'll get into that later. Um, I, did, I had no idea what I was going to do. I was in a dark place um, my senior year. I wanted to stop dancing. Um, oh, wow. But um, God sent William Isaac, my mentor. Um, he created a piece my senior year. Shout and out to he, William Isaac. He's a former member, right? Uh, yes, he's yeah, a former okay. member. Okay. Yes. Right. And um, yeah, he kind of guided me through that. But that's when I really started seeking God for myself. Mm. Um, and not really because my grandmother told me to go to church because she believes in it. I, I got it. Like I was doing it for myself. Uh -huh. And um, it wasn't until I started trying to gain intimacy with God and seeking him. And it was time for me to go to the next level. And I know I needed to get baptized. Um, I was christened as a baby, but um, for me, I needed to make that decision. It was based on my faith. You have to have wow. faith in order to take that next level. So um, as a baby, I didn't know what I was doing. So uh -huh. I was just like, I need to go to the next level. Um, not knowing really, I know about baptism, but I didn't really know what it was about. I needed to get further information because I know this was an important step in my journey. Okay. Um, so long story short, um, met these amazing women who um, 
study the Bible with, and I was blown away. I had to learn some things and unlearn some things, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. There was a lot of things that were mind-blowing, and I came out of those studies really knowing what it means to be a true follower of Christ. And wow. I was just like, oh, this is the real deal. This is what baptism means. Okay, I'm ready. And I made that big step. And ever since then, um, everything that I do, I'm trying to make sure that I am. You know how we say we are ambassadors of Ailey? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm an ambassador of Christ. I try to basically evangelize any way I can through my movement, through mm -hmm. word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, just merely having the conversations. You know, my conversations, like, I am trying to show, remove me. I want God's light to, sh to shine through me. So mm -hmm. that's like a short snippet of my journey. Wow. Thank you for that. Okay, for those of you guys who are just joining us, if you have any questions for prophetess, <laughs> evangelist, uh, deaconess, <laughs> you are no me. sister you are minister, me. <laughs> Kalia Campbell, at the bottom of your screen, next to the comment bar, there is an icon with two overlapping boxes with a question mark in it. Drop your question in that icon, and we'll get to your questions um, towards the end of the conversation. Let's talk about where you're from. Where are you from? How did you start dancing? Like, what's up with that? Like, I'm tell from the shit. Boogie Down Bronx. Real. Um, okay. It's so crazy because I am from the Bronx, but I was raised in Harlem. Okay. I don't okay. really say that much because it, it's just too much to say. <laughs> okay. So but I really you, just leave that out. But um, a lot of my um, after schools and just uh, dance programs, um, even down to the school that I was going to was all in Harlem. Oh, okay. Um, so, oh, so you're from around the way. I'm from around the way. Um, like me too, me rich, too. Representing the South Side of um, Chicago. Shout out to uh, Michelle part, Obama. I was in the summer, spending summertime with my uh, great grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, right by Rango Colonial Projects. That mm -hmm. was me all in there running around, Come acting through. a fool. <laughs> but um, yeah, I always had a love for dance. Um, like I said, I started in the church and um, just to backtrack, um, my father, who is no longer with us, with me, um, he was a DJ. And he used to put his equipment around my mom's, you know, stomach. Uh -huh. And the rest is history. Um, I came out having the, you know, the natural inclination to move, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so my mom put me in dance class. I started tap when I was four. Okay. Started tap when I was four at Ruth Williams in Harlem, right on 125th Street. Come through. Um, Are they then still after there? that, huh? Are they still there? Is that studio still? I think the studio is still open. She recently passed away. I am oh, not okay. sure gotcha. if the studio is still open, but I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, after that, um, I got kind of got bored. Um, they weren't moving me up. Mm -hmm. Don't know why. Um, so I just stopped for a while, and then my mom found. Um, this dance school in Harlem, again, um, on the east side called Uptown Dance Academy. <laughs> Shout and, out to Uptown Dance Academy. <laughs> and that's when I really was um, diving into all styles of dance, like to ballet, to gymnastics, to hip hop, tap, like everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like, um, it was like a mashup <laughs> of everything yeah. we used to do. So I did that. In one class or just? Sometimes in one class. Like my uh, dance teacher, Robin Williams, was like a Tally Beatty fanatic. Uh-huh. So we would do like ballet bar and then go in the center and just bust out in jazz. Like all oh, of a cool. sudden. Yeah. And tap two? Tap two? Sometimes so, like tap <laughs> so wait a minute. How old were you? I was nine. Oh, that's deep. So you had a ballet jazz Afro tap at one hour. You had a combo platter. Yes, she made side. sure <laughs> her students were able to do it all, like, and fearless okay. at that. I remember jumping off people and doing all this other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Black dance. Black. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, during that time, I didn't really know about uh, 
dance schools and dance companies. I just knew I knew I just wanted to dance. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my friends that were in the same studio as me were uh, dance in PPAS. They went to school in PPAS. So, uh -huh. and then that's why I heard about Ailey. And just various teachers coming in, like, you remind me of the Ailey dancer, like Ailey. I just always heard Ailey, 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 Ailey. So I was just like, okay. Um, so when it was time to audition for schools, I auditioned and um, I didn't go to PPAS. I ended up going to LaGuardia. Okay. And I was not uh, happy about it because I knew PPAS was linked to Ailey. Okay, got you. So um, I was crying my first day in LaGuardia, but I'm so happy that I was there. Um, spent my four years there. And like I said before, I met William Isaac. Um, he was choreographing a piece on the seniors. And um, at the time, I was going through a whole bunch of stuff. I had torn my meniscus. So, oh, okay. yeah, I was going through a lot. And he really saw something in me. So after that, he really took me under his wing. And at the time he was uh, forming his own company. So okay. he brought me into his company and after high school and I started touring, I got my first job at 18. Um, okay. Shout out to Sarita Allen. Shout out to Sarita Allen. <laughs> she gave me my first job in Aida in Taiwan and it was history from me. I went to DTH. Uh -huh. Um, because I knew I needed to solidify my technique. Um, mm -hmm. they just, I just needed. I was just like, I can't go to Italy looking a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need my technique to be refined. So I went there for uh two years, um, freelance while I was working at uh when I went while I was dancing with DTH, mm -hmm. um, in the school, and then I did a summer program. Mm -hmm. Uh, Troy Powell saw me um dancing with Ray Mercer in his piece. I got invited to take company class, became an apprentice, mm -hmm. was in Ailey 2, and now I'm here. A little mm -hmm. short, you know, snippet of my journey. I think my first encounter with you, I think you were a student at the Ailey School. Um, we did a gig together. We did. We did. We did. We did, the, we did. We did the gig for uh, for Lewis Johnson. It was yes. Rest in peace, Lewis Johnson. Yes, like we did. Uh, there was the a, Wiz. Uh, yep. Yeah. There was a whiz, but there was a uh, a tribute to Lewis Johnson. Yes. And I remember, I think we were we were rehearsing all over the place. We were rehearsing at George Faison's Firehouse. We were rehearsing every anywhere we can get space. <laughs> yeah. And I think this day we were uh, we were at DTH. We were waiting to get into the uh, studio to rehearse because I think something was going on in the studio at DTH. And so we, you know, we were just chilling uh -huh. outside of the studio. I guess warming up or probably talking. <laughs> and I remember uh, one of the, uh, there was a woman who actually ended up being in the tribute. She, uh, she was like a dancer from back in the day. And uh, she had come up to us and she was talking to us. And she was, I guess, in her own little way, she was, I guess she was trying to give us guidance. You know how like people do that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, she was like, so what do you guys want to do? <laughs> and I can think we remember you saying, well, my dream is to be in the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. And I don't even remember that. I remember it. And then uh, there was a, uh, I think she said, well, I just want to let you know that I've been in the business for over 30 years and Ailey will always be there. You got to go to Broadway. You got to do X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. But look at you now. Look at you now. I think you were just a student. I think you were yes. just a student. I was just a at student that at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I was. I was probably, that was probably during my little moment of just like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I, I was, was out here. I was, I was moving, moving yeah, the God. pieces around. Oh he yeah, he was moving it. the pieces around. He was just moving was the moving, pieces around. He was moving the pieces around. So now that you are in, this is technically your second season. Yes, this is like the end of my second season. I guess come June, I will be technically starting my third season with mm -hmm. the company. But uh, 2020 was an amazing. Uh, well, yeah, this season, 2020, was an amazing season for you because you were recognized by Dance Magazine. I can make that face, too. <laughs> by Dance Magazine as one of the top 25 dancers to watch. Oh, Lord. And I'm, tw I'm 26. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they said that uh, this is what they said about you. Uh, Leah Campbell. <laughs> 
Emotions flood through Kalia Campbell's every move as the Umbrella Woman. In Ailey's revelations, her torso and arms ripple with joy. As a soloist in Darrell Graham Moultrie's Ounce of Faith, she turns heads with dancing that's smooth and silky yet sharp and purposeful. Purposeful. All right. Campbell st first stood out as a long leg gazelle on the Ailey 2 stage. But since joining the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater in 2018, she's become even more commanding. Proud of her role in the company's legacy, the Bronx native holds nothing back on stage. See what I'm saying? You don't hold anything back on stage. Generously giving her all to the work, not just physical, but spiritually. There's that spirit word again. How do you feel about those words that were said that were said about you? Purposeful, spiritual, holding nothing back on stage. Um, I call sign, by the way. I have a story to tell. Tell that story. And, um, I mean, I will hope it shows through my movement. Mm -hmm. And just to hear, I mean, dance is a form of expression. So mm -hmm. I want people to, yes, realize my technique and the lines and my poise and elegance. But at the end of the day, it's a form of expression. And for me, if my spirit isn't spilling out if my soul isn't transcending through me then what's the point mm. Mm. so i'm little i'm i'm grateful and i'm honored and really thankful that they noticed the spiritual aspect of your aspect of things okay. yes okay. um because that's all i want to do when i get on stage is for people to see me um mm -hmm. well to, for God's light to shine through me, but for people to see my spirit and my soul and for, for them to see my story and not just the legs and the feet and me on stage. I want my spirit to show. And by them saying that, um, I'm grateful. I'm really, really grateful. I agree. You know what? I, I think that um, it's truly evident because, um, you, know, um, I, you know, I kept, I kept this word spirit it's just wrapped all up and through your story because, and what you just said is evident to everyone, especially uh, Dewana Smallwood, uh, a former that member. Her. I love Shout her. out to Dewana Smallwood. Uh, y'all look like y'all come from the same tribe. But, we uh, are from form... the same tribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, a former uh, diva, former leading woman in the incredible, company. Incredible, incredible. Incredible woman. Cool. Incredible woman. This is what she had to say. Woo, baby. And I'm telling you, it's constantly, like, it's evident to everyone. Um, Dewana said, this girl right here dances like her ancestors are at her back. The angels are on her wings. And God is whispering in her ears. Girl. She actually said girl, exclamation mark. Uh, I'm going to have to repeat that again. This girl right here dances like her ancestors are at, the, at, are at her back. The angels are on her wings and God is whispering in her ears. That's, that's, that's some heavy, not some heavy stuff coming from a heavy hitter. Yeah, and I'm trying I mean, not to cry, Solomon. It's all right. Let it out. Do what you got to do. That's amazing that she said that the, a woman like that, a woman of her stature, yeah, has acknowledged you for the way. I mean, Kalia, you are the real deal. Like I'm telling you, it's not even about it's not even about your your facility. It is about your facility, but it is your you. I'm telling you, whenever you go out on stage, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You go out there, and it's real. It's completely real. I have never. I mean. You are one of my favorite dancers. Oh, Solomon. You okay. are one of my favorite dancers. Like, no cap, like I said before. So um, I just wanted to take that time out to just acknowledge that and just acknowledge, like, the jerk. Like, what do you feel? I don't want you to take a minute to just think about this, but what do you feel your purpose is in this company? Um, God is real. Um. 
I want to draw, I want to, I want everybody to share in the favor that he has given me. Um, I want everybody to see what God can do in their lives. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm here, um, to draw people nearer to him. Mm -hmm. um, he is the creator. We are the creation. Mm. And it's my job to uh, remind people of that. Mm. Um, yeah, I think my purpose, and if it comes to evangelizing, um, shout out to my sister Jessica, God made that move and she got baptized. That's what I'm supposed to, that's my purpose. Mm. To draw people nearer to him. Because mm. he's given me this talent to uh, worship him through it. Mm. Um, so that's my purpose. And I feel like my purpose um, really keeps me grounded. It keeps me grateful. And it keeps me uh, focused on the task at hand. Mm. Um, literally, my spiritual journey has helped me cut out the noise. Wow. Um, and when I say cut out the noise, my own insecurities um, sometimes build up and it's still a constant struggle that I have of, you know, not being adequate enough or not being worthy enough. Um, and just the nature of the dance world, um, the parts, the posters, the recognition, the validation, if you don't mm -hmm. get that pat on your back, um, it, it shuts out the noise because I'm reminded of my purpose because sometimes you're not going to get that pat on your back. So what mm. happens now? That's real. Does it devalue you? No, it doesn't. Mm. Um, so it it helps shut out the noise. And when I don't get that that stuff, or when I'm like, my pride sinks in. It's like, why well, I didn't get that part? It's kind of like, Kalia. He's like, humble yourself. You're not here for that. Yes, you know, work for the parts. Yes, we we love the parts. You know, like mm -hmm. he's like, you're not here for that. You're here to do this. Even if I'm all the way in the back corner, everything I do must be intentional. What am I doing all the way in that back corner? So it really keeps me focused at the task at hand. And it allows me to have freedom. And it just allows me to have fun as well because I'm not caught up in the, in like, in the insecurities or I'm not caught up in the parts. So I'm not caught up in the, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm not, I, he keeps me straight. <laughs> keeps it seems me like you found a, a, a liberty and freedom within this discipline of being faithful and, 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 and yes. Um, some people, you know, think it's a restriction, but I, I see it as freedom because I'm not caught up in the world's validation of me. I know how God sees me and what he wants me to do. And in that I have freedom. Mm. And like I said, it's a constant struggle. Like I'm human. <laughs> I'm going to feel inadequate at times. I'm mm -hmm. going to feel like I deserve this or I deserve that or whatever the case may be. But checking in with God always keeps me humble. <laughs> He's like, humble yourself. You, it's not even, all, it's not even about that. Mm. What are you doing on this stage? Mm. It, are you being a beacon of light for hope, peace, healing? What, like, what are you doing? Like I said, mm. even if you're in that back corner. And if I am at the spotlight, then so be it, you know? But like, um, yeah, it just keeps me, it keeps me grateful. It keeps me disciplined. Um, it keeps me focused. What, what is, thank you for that. What is your advice for the younger Kalia? The, um, the Kalia, uh, the 16 year old Kalia at LaGuardia. Yo, <clears throat> you're worthy. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to prove and everything to share, like you always say. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of things. Be patient with yourself and trust his timing. Mm. And continue to do the work. Because mm -hmm. um, we can't ask God of all these things and we don't do the work either. So it's, it's keep doing the work, keep being diligent, keep persevering. Be patient, trust the timing, and you are worthy. Mm. You are validated. So that's what I would tell myself because mm -hmm. I was trying to seek validation from 
every which way because of my own insecurities. I was just like, well, am I good? Or I can't, I don't know these term, these ballet terminologies. Do I got technique or am I put in a box? Like I would just tell myself, you're worthy, stay present, mm -hmm. um, trust his timing. So this spiritual uh, transformation that you've had or this uh, development that you had, you, it's definitely without a doubt help you become a better artist, a better woman, a better citizen, a better, um, and you know, I was joking with, I mean, you know, I like to, I'm, we I'm, have this relationship. Know, we be, yes, we be cutting up, we be cutting up. <laughs> but this has made your journey all the better, like your, your experience in the company all the better because you've decided to dedicate your life to um, spiritual growth, yeah. spiritual development. And also sharing that with your friends, your sisters, the fellow disciples. <laughs> uh, one thing, one thing I, I, I gotta, I gotta acknowledge. One thing that I love about you, I said it, I said it in the beginning of the uh, broadcast. Uh, uh -huh. I call you my accountability partner. Oh, in more ways than one. Answer the I mean, call. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I'm, get, I'm getting there. No, but wait. But uh, you, you, you hold me accountable, not only in my personal life, but in my uh, on stage. You are the one that says, Solomon, what was that? No, we didn't have a, we were supposed to have a connection. What happened? What happened? Come or another on. Time, or you another know? time, what, what was that time I got, a, I walked off stage. He was like, uh-uh, why you not sweating? Why you not, uh-uh, you usually be sweating. Why you not sweating? Uh-uh, Solomon, uh-uh, you was marking. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't mark. I was just, you, you know. You full I, black, full out. We full know. out. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Where I, I, I appreciate you for that. I appreciate it because you, you hold me accountable. I respect you. And it's nice to have somebody. <laughs> it's, nice, <laughs> it's nice to have a friend that can let you have it. Like, Listen. What's up? We were supposed to have a connection. You weren't looking at me. You weren't watching me. What's up? Okay. What's up? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate that. I love you. I love I'm you thankful. too. That is your purpose for me, to hold me accountable at all times. Uh, oh, so be it. Let's let's get to some. Are you ready to answer some questions? I, yeah. Okay. Let's okay. let's 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 get to some questions Come because on, you have. Hmm. Here is a question from Aza Bashir. Oh, my sister. What was it like working with Richard Seagal, Ballet of Difference? How has freelance work prepared you for Italy? Great question. What was it? Um, shout out to Ebony See, Williams. Who? Did I? Okay. Ebony Williams. She um, is like a big sister to me. Um, he had choreographed. He had choreographed on Cedar Lake. Mm -hmm. And Rich's company is in Munich, Germany. And mm -hmm. I think Ebony, I don't know what it was, but Ebony wasn't able to do that tour. And he was looking for dancers um, uh, specifically on point. Now, oh, wow. okay. I ain't dance on point. <laughs> I don't know for how long. I was just like, so when Ebony called me, she was just like, I have a gig for you. You still got the boot on? I'm like, ooh, no, I don't. Like, I was oh, at wow. Ailey at the time, so I was just like, nervous. I was just like, oh, Lord, I got to put the boot back on. So, um, intense, intense rehearsals with Ebony Williams. She does not play. She does not play with me. Um, I love her for it. I love mm -hmm. her. She's an incredible artist. Mm -hmm. And um, she basically told Richard, she was just like, hey, I have this girl to fill in for me. She's perfect. And I was just like, I don't know about all of that. You know? Um, and he saw me. He was just like, yeah. So it was intense rehearsals um, with Ebony. And then I learned the piece in like a week. And it was, it was like a, it was, like a 30 minute piece it was a long ballet with mm -hmm. nobody there but just me and yeah. her and joaquin <laughs> shout out to joaquin too oh yeah um, he's all the cedar lake dancers so 
um, it was time for me to travel to Europe. Uh -huh. And he had asked to see it. And the amount of love I got from everybody was incredible. Because I was nervous. I am dancing with people from Cedar Lake, Heavy um, the Royal yeah. Ballet. I was just like, so I'm in the back like, ah, uh, ah, uh, this is not. <laughs> Girl from the Bronx. Right, I'm like, what is Represent. happening? So he, it didn't feel like that, though. The way he embraced me and the court, he had choreographed it on Ebony. But mm -hmm. he maneuvered it for me because oh, wow. I'm a different dancer than Ebony. So he really took the time. It, he cultivated me. It was mm. definitely a cultivating experience working with Richard um, in Valley of Difference. And he made me feel so comfortable when mm. I did not feel comfortable at all, especially um, being an alien, not having the boot back on, like having the boot on, the point shoes. Um, he made me feel comfortable. He made me feel like I could do it. He made me feel like I could do anything. So, and he really took me in. And that is family always. I always say like, you got a spot for me. And he's like, whenever you could, whenever you want to come back, you could come back. Oh, nice. And it really became, he really became family. So it was amazing working with him. So cultivating. And everybody there was, um, it was really family. I felt at home. Wow, okay. So you were yeah. guest artist in a uh, contemporary company in Germany. I didn't yeah. even know that. Yeah. No, I think I did, but I didn't, you know. You know yeah, it was, it was a little uh, quick thing. <laughs> a quick gig. Yeah, a quick, well, gig. quick gig. And then um, how did, has freelance helped me? Um, I've always it. been the youngest in the room. Okay. Prior to getting into Ailey, now I'm one of the youngest in the room. But um, it helped because I was able to be a sponge and really gravitate to the people who are, were in the industry already. Um, I was learning from them. What, did, what do they do? How um, they, you know, keep up their bodies, what their routine is. Like, mm -hmm. I used to always watch them. When I was in AIDA, I was in the play with Edward Franklin, Makeda Creighton, uh, mm -hmm. Victor Reddick, uh, Ashley Mayu, shout out to her. Like we, I was all, I was in the room with them and I was the youngest. So I was just like, oh my goodness. Aza, I was in there with her and I was just like, wow. So I was constantly um, taking notes. Good. Mm -hmm. um, working with George Faison too. Good girl. Mm -hmm. um, you um, working with him, you have to be ready. Mm -hmm. Because he will be like, okay, go. You don't know uh -huh. what I just did? Like, that type of situation. And it's like, no, I don't. But you got to figure it out. Uh -huh. So working with him definitely um, trained me to be ready and, okay. like, go for it. So, And I'm sure you were able to use that, uh, that ballet, Afro jazz, tap, uh, <laughs> contortion. Combination, right? I'm sure all of that came into... Uh, Came up to good use or whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, you know, working it worked with out working yeah. with him because he's yeah. a, uh, another one that just likes to pull stuff out of the bag. Shout Next out to question. George Faison. Shout out to George Faison. Nobody like him. Um, where, oh my gosh, I just lost it. Uh, where's the question at? Here we go. What is your daily spiritual maintenance plan? This is from Maxwell Waterman, sending you both light, oh. love, and joy and a peace that surpasses all understanding yes that's another one um that's my brother he really was kind of like my spiritual god in school too when i was in the oh school. really yeah he, he oh, got me true. together he used to get oh, me wow. together too um when i was insecure and you know dwelling in my sorrow being dramatic shout out <laughs> um, to maxwell he was just like uh uh girl you worthy like don't mm -hmm. you got a gift keep that chin up and keep moving like he was that person but um what is my routine um i'll wake up i set time up i set time aside for me and god so in the morning mm -hmm. i wake up early i pray mm -hmm. for 30 minutes because i got a lot to pray about sometimes longer um mm -hmm. i pray uh read get into the word um and then I kind of, before I pray, though, I kind of meditate to really uh, 
get my reverence together. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a lot to pray for. Sometimes I have to like just meditate on what I need to pray for and just really sit there and just be still. And then I pray and then I get into the word. So that's quiet time. Like in the morning, I set my day out the in the morning. So I'm ready for the battle. I'm ready for like. Somebody said set the atmosphere. Set huh? the atmosphere. Set the atmosphere. Somebody yeah, said exactly, that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I do that in the morning. Um, and then I just go about my day. Always um, keeping in touch with what he has to say to me. Because spirituality takes work. It's work. It's a relationship, it's a you know. Process. It's a relationship yeah. between you and God. So it's not like, hey, I'm gonna pray and then that's it. Like it takes work. So I'm constantly after I, you know, have my set aside time with Him. Mm -hmm. um, I go through my day, but I'm still reminding myself and I'm still checking in. Mm. Um, because, like I said, it's a relationship and it takes work. And then I just go about my day, and then at night I'll probably get into the Word more or do some reading. Make sure I'm, you know, having time for me, and then I pray before I go to sleep. Mm. So that's your spiritual maintenance routine. Yeah, I. It's like I said, it's work. You have to constantly check in. Sometimes you, if I have uh, to get in the word three times a day, that's just what it has to take. <laughs> and were you always this way? No. When did when did when did when did, when did you become disciplined? In when I got baptized, um, in July of twenty nineteen. 2019, July 21st. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah, okay. Okay. And that's, that's when, you... when the discipline started, really started. Because okay. I knew what I was doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I was being taught, you know? Got you. Yeah. You got your accountability partners. Okay. Tyler. Yeah. Shout out to Tyler. <laughs> shout out to Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I have, pe I have people holding me accountable. Mm -hmm. Like, was that... Was that right? Was that the right thing to do? Or like, are you checking in? Like, I have people holding me accountable, which is good. You need that, you know. Like you do with me. Like yeah. <laughs> I mean, we need that. We can't. Mm -hmm. We don't. We can't go through life being loners. Like, we need each other. We need a community. Right. You need a community. You know? We need a community. Support. God yeah. didn't put us here to be by ourselves. You know, we need that family. We need a community to hold each other accountable because. Um, God wants the best for us. We need to live up to a certain standard. So if you're my friend, I want to see you at your best as you for me, you know? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Next question from um, Hope Boy Can Dance. What was it like when you found out Miss Jamison had her eye on you? Unbelievable. <laughs> First of all, I didn't even... so. I told you when I was in <clears throat> Uptown Dance Academy, this early word just kept coming up. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing, you remind me of Julie Jamison. Or like, cause I didn't know anything, Solomon. I had no idea of who these people were. I didn't know. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until, like I said, um, my friend started going to PBS and then I was getting familiar. And then I saw a picture of her and I was just like, oh, that's her. That's Miss Jamison. So I was just like, you know, being fam getting familiar with it. So I knew who she was and I know the weight she held. Um, so she's George Faison again. I did Tornado Girl in The Wiz um, in Central Park and she was there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was in the Prince, I was in my apprenticeship year in Ailey 2 and we were, it was me, and my peers watching Illy 2. You know, when you're an apprentice, you kind of have to be there. You have to be on call at all times. You don't know what's going to happen. Right. And I was watching them perform in City Group Theater at Illy, and she was behind us. And um, she tapped me on my shoulder and was like, hey, can you come to my office after this? And I was just like, Huh? Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm now like, I'm like, what did I do? So now, you know, my parents are like, ooh, what she say? What did she say? Of I'm course. like, I don't know what she's, I don't know. I got to go Wait. see. Like, I don't know. So I went upstairs and she let me have it. So apparently she was watching me in class. 
Okay. <laughs> I have this thing where I like to stand in the back because, and it's like completely absurd to me because I'm tall and I'm black. You know, I'm dark skinned. I got these long legs. Like I can't mm -hmm. hide. So no, I don't can't. know who I was mm -hmm. trying to play. Mm -hmm. So I was in the back because I feel comfortable in this. So if I mess up, nobody's going to see me. Not true. So <laughs> I just wanted to be in the back, you know, and she was watching that. And I, I didn't know. There would be moments where I turn around and I, I did see her. So she came, I went to her office and she was just like, why do you stand in the back? And I was just mm -hmm. like, ooh. She was just like, why are you standing in the back? Ailey didn't create this space for that. Come he, created this, he created this space for you Ooh. to shine. Why are Ooh. you standing in the back? And she was like, I've seen you perform, so I really don't know why you're standing in the back. And I literally was like in shambles. I, I think I probably started crying. I don't know what I was doing. I was just like, oh, wow. But at that moment, we established a relationship and I knew this was Miss Jamison, but it was now like she's like a mother, my aunt, my grandmother. It was kind of like mentor, that nurturing yeah. spirit. I was just like, whoa, she really cares. So when I, every time I, you know, I'm with her, I feel that, but then I take a step back and I'm like, oh my gosh, it, this is Miss Jamison. So it was really life changing for me. And she doesn't, I tell her this all the time, she doesn't know what she did for me that day when I saw that she had my, her eye on me. Um, best believe I was in the front of all my classes <laughs> because one, if Ms. Jamison says stand in the front, you stand in the front. So I was just like, I'm in the right. front because I don't want her coming up. <laughs> so, right. You know, but she saw something in me and she didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. She didn't have to do that for me. And I'm forever grateful for her. And it was just life changing when I found out she was looking at me. It was life changing. Like what I'm the, so grateful. What does she represent for you? Now that you're now that you're in the company doing roles that she that she she was the umbrella lady or she you know stepping into roles that she's performed like what does she represent? What does she what does Miss Jamison mean to you now? Um legacy um mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Um she paved the way for women who looked like me, you know? So me dancing her roles now and starting to step into some of her roles, I feel like almost like the baton is being passed. Like I feel entrusted. Um, mm -hmm. She means, yeah, history, legacy to me. Um, I don't even know the other words to say. She's just nurturing. She's a mother figure to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Grace. Elegant. She's just a lot of things mm. to me. And she represents a lot for me. Do you remember like a, a like your most memorable piece of information she's given to you because you've been in you've been in spaces with her or, or is it the or is it that get out stand in the front <laughs> yeah it was that and it was kind of like and then she would yeah she was just like and then she would be like it's just dance like that sounds like something she would say like and she like... said that alvin used to say that alvin ailey used to say that to her as well mm. um it's just dance, have fun, you know? Mm. So she said, Alvin Ailey said that to her and she passed that information down to me when I was speaking with her um, during our talk that I that I had with her when I was reading my thinking note to her. But, Shout out to Katie Kirk. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but yeah, she, there's so many gems. I can't even remember. There's just so every time I talk to her, is this gems being passed down to me because of what comes out of her mouth. She's just she's experienced, you know. She she's lived this life, you know. She she just, she has a lot to offer. So every time I speak to her, it's always something new. But when she 
the fact that she told me she was just like you are worthy like get mm -hmm. in the front like you have what it takes it was kind of like whoa mm -hmm. and she's like at the end of the day it's just it's let's just not dance. it's just dance but yeah don't <laughs> yeah. trip yeah sometimes people get caught up you know uh who it's a good one it's a really good one Killer Kalia, because she murders the stage in the name of Jesus. <laughs> what has been your biggest dance challenge? What has been your biggest dance challenge? And how did you overcome it? Dream, oh, oh and how did you overcome it? And then there's a second question, dream early roll. <clears throat> My biggest dance challenge, um, I don't even think it is a dance challenge. It's just my fear. I always have to overcome. Sometimes I feel like I can't do certain things. Like, say, I'm just going to, for example, when Wayne McGregor came to set a piece. Okay. Cairo. And, um, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it is what it is. I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to get into this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go for it and um because you know the technical aspects weren't there when I was younger so that kind of um well you mean technical aspect what do you like ballet you? like I didn't really when I got to high school I didn't really know the terminology like that Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because you were taking the combo, the, the album. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You're doing a combo platter cl uh, class with a pickle and a slaw on the side. You was doing that Afro ballet, tap jazz, <laughs> hip hop. I mean, I knew what ballet was, but it was kind of like the foundation was just like not there, and I was just like, oh my goodness. So, um, I think just to sum it up, to just remain open. I think that was my biggest dance challenge when I when things come up that I'm not comfortable with, I kind of like retrieve back. Like I kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't know, gotcha. I'm going in the, like I'm going in the back. Right. I'm going gotcha. in the back. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, going through, going through that uh, contemporary ballet piece, it was something that I wasn't really, you know, confident about. Mm -hmm. But how did I overcome it? Um, checking in, doing that spiritual work. I'm, constantly telling myself that um you can do anything and this was handed to you for a reason wait didn't didn't we have a similar situation with didn't matthew help us both in that situation are you wait so this is bus Ky no 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 kairos too Re <laughs> oh Cause yes because you, you, you told me you told me we actually did the same thing we matthew so rushing i love him he gets me together he said can i talk to you for a minute he does this thing <laughs> and he's just like when like when yes and he just he, he was breathing life into me but reading me at the same time Get like you together like yeah. you're that's here that, so what are you waiting for Russian, like what you waiting for like what, he was what, just what, like what, what are you waiting for mm-hmm and like I said, breathing life into me, you know, I'm worthy. I got this for a reason, you know, like, but like, what do you wait for? It's time. And he was just, I see things in you that you don't even see in yourself. And I want you to see it. Right. What are you waiting for? And that was all that I need. Cause I was just like, oh, okay. And I remember me being in rehearsal, like, you know, and going, just going, just going for it. And then his, his uh, reaction was like, that was a little better. I was just like, ah. <laughs> Exactly. That's what he said. He doesn't say good. He was like, it was, it was better. That was, a little, was yeah, better. That, was, that was better. I'm like, well, I just went off. Right. Right. Well, in, in in my opinion, but um, shout out to Mr. Rushing um for always He's holding for us accountable. You, mm -hmm. He is good for taking you on the side of taking you on the stairs. And like, okay, so uh, let me What's talk to you five minutes, like uh. <laughs> Or after rehearsal, when you're trying to rush out, trying to get exactly. it. <laughs> She's like, okay, so uh, wait, 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 wait. I think we need to have a moment. I think we need <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely good for that, and I'm grateful for him. Um, but, yeah, my biggest dance challenge, I feel like, is just to remain open um, when stuff like that, when I'm not comfortable with certain um, styles of dance, just to go for it. 
-hmm. half of the time choreographers aren't looking at how fast you can pick up the choreography they just want to see you go for it and how mm -hmm. engaged you are and how present you are so i have to constantly rem remind myself of that and um and like i said do that check-in and that's how i'm over the over i'm um, able to overcome it just being like okay just do it block everything out just go for it um and my dream role to do is cry mm, okay. that is my dream role to do is umbrella girl and i got that um my when i got into the company um yeah i was completely shocked about that but um that was one of my dream roles and it still is i love one of my favorite roles to do but i think the next is cry because of what the story holds, it was, you know, dedicated to Ailey's mom, and I watched my mom go through some stuff. Mm. And she is the definition of perseverance, when I tell you. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, I can envision me, I got, yeah, I, I get emotional, because it's kind of that, when I do it, I'm going to be thinking about her the whole time, you know, like, mm -hmm. just what she sacrificed for me. And um yeah, and it's just um a legendary role that means so much to so many people, so many women and men. So um remember I think, uh I think remember, that's my dream role. <laughs> remember when we were uh I think we it was this past city center, um and we were leaving uh, we I think we just got finished performing Lazarus and Fauna uh shout out to Fauna to, Fauna, uh, my sis. She came to uh, visit us. She came to see us, and she brought a friend with us. Or, uh, she brought a friend with her. Remember when that woman prophesied in the lobby of uh, <laughs> that lady prophesied in the lobby of City Center, saying, "You're gonna do cry." And I was You're like, going to do okay. Cry. "Okay, You're gonna do cry. <laughs> You're going to do cry." I remember that moment. I remember yeah. that moment. She, it's, I've yeah, I've been learning the third section. Haven't performed it yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been blessed with the opportunity to be in the room with Ms. Jamison, getting the notes, and running the third section of Cry. So um, it's starting to happen already, but like that's in its entirety. I'm excited and nervous to uh, <laughs> to do it because of you on stage by yourself for what thirteen minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so so that's that's my dream role i can't wait to see it i cannot wait to see I it. we can't have wait to see it too <laughs> we have time for like one last question and i want to make it a good one oh man so many good ones i'm trying to get a good one that's not uh okay Okay, here we go. Cool. Here we go. What has been your favorite performance to date? Oh, I don't know. It's so many. Okay, I'm just gonna pick one. Just pick one, Kalia. Um me performing ounce of faith at Lincoln Center. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Specifically at Lincoln Center because I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the best four years at LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. That's me. Mm -hmm. Life happened, right? So mm -hmm. there was a lot of, just a lot of negativity being brought my way. Let's yeah. just say that. And people didn't see it. Some people did. Some people saw it. Some people didn't. Um, see it but, for you as a dancer? Are you saying? Um... I guess, be yeah, I guess, like, concert dance. They didn't see you as a concert dancer. Some people, some people, not all. Um, okay. Some people. Um, I ain't going to tell you what they said, because that's for a different time. But, right, that's for, that's but, for the... Uh, yeah, but... Um, unlocked conversation. Right, exactly. So, um, <laughs> me performing at Lincoln Center, walking down on that orchestra pit, across the street, from LaGuardia High School, it was amazing. Like, I'm, I can't figure out the words. Mm. Um, just remembering 
what I was going through and just the, remembering the work that I put into this and the people who um, guided me to this point. And the piece is about mentors. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Darrell Graham Motri, who is William's best friend. He saw me and he's been guiding me also through this, this, uh, my career. And the fact that he was able to give me that part it's like full circle. He's known me since I was 17 and now I'm in the company and that was his first commission in the company. It was just like, whoa, this is happening. It was definitely divine timing, it me was. and Darrell. And um, yeah, just being there and open and just the legacy, I opened up the curtain and seeing all of y'all beautiful faces. I was just like, is this happening? Like. Every time I do it, I'm like, this is the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. I cannot believe that I... And you're raising that curtain. And you're raising the curtain. It's it's like, well, sometimes I'm just like, ooh, I'm tired. Let me, you know, but other times it's kind of surreal. It's kind of like, wow, this is happening. So mm -hmm. my, that's and, my favorite. And now look at you. You are Dance Magazine's top 25. Uh, shout out to Ebony Williams. She came Ebony! through for a sister. <laughs> but you are Dance Magazine's top 25 dancers to watch for 2020. And um, how fitting. Your, uh, your unapologetic, unashamed faith in God has just, like, taken you to this place that I look, words can't even define. Um, like I said before, you are one of my favorite dancers every time. You go Same out on stage, me, you no matter me. no matter what. I wasn't asking you for all of that, but no matter whatever whatever it is you're doing on stage, I am completely like moved by your artistry, and I want to thank you for blessing us with this hour of power, sharing your testimony of faith thank you, and Sally. purpose and discipline. Thank you for that. I am truly, truly honored to be in the presence. You, of Kalia Campbell you're on stage. I'm not funny. I'm telling the truth. Don't 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 try it. All don't right, try all right, it. But anyway, got you. I love you. That's all. That's all. I love That's you all. too. That's all. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another conversations with today. We had conversations with Kalia Campbell. Tune in. This is a weekly broadcast. Tune in Wednesdays and Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern. Again, if you want to stay. Uh, up to date with everything we have going on, Ailey, really, Ailey related content and streaming. Speaking of streaming, we're streaming Robert Battles Mass tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, but if you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on, go to alvinailey.org slash Ailey Keep Dancing. Um, again, Kalia, thank you for this hour Love of you. power. I'm, I'm showing I'm you so much love. I'm going to call you. Call me. Call me. I'm going to answer. I, I will answer. All right. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye. Thank you. Stay encouraged, everybody.